Well, Rick, just to start off with, how did you get involved in racing at the very beginning? Well, it was uh, basically the first racing I ever did was drag racing. Was you know, it really? I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed hot rods. You know, that's back in the year when everybody wanted to work on their cars and up through high school, you know, just trying to make your car faster and try to outrun everybody. But got into drag racing. <clears throat> well, got into going to the tracks after, you know, kept getting in trouble on the streets. And uh, <laughs> but and then in I don't know what year it was, but they started uh, doing that bracket racing. And I did not like that. I did not, you know, that's when they – you can run against anybody. You could be in a full-blown hot rod and r- race against a Volkswagen, and the Vol- they let the Volkswagen go, and he's almost at the end of the track, and then you have to leave and try to outrun him. And I never liked that. And I had a good friend of mine uh, here in Bartow that would run, a, run on a short track here at Auburndale Speedway. And so I took the motor out of my, my drag car and put in the, uh, an old 65 Chevelle and went over, didn't know anything. And that's when I got bit because the first heat race I ever run, I won. So I said, man, this is easy. Ain't nothing to this. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. I just, that's where I started. And, and a little short track, uh, a little third, uh, quarter of a mile short track right here in Auburndale Speedway in Florida. Now, what was your progression up through the ranks like? Where You started Auburndale. Where did you go from there? And then finally, how did Winston Cup come into the picture? I, I ran there uh, at Auburndale in a, uh, what they would call – I ran there with, with my drag motor, but I knew right then it, well, it blew, blew up pretty quick. But then I got an old car, what they call Super Sixes. <laughs> it, had a, it had a six-cylinder, a 194 Chevrolet in it. And uh, it uh, was just a small tires except for the right front. And it, back in the day, that you could run a big right front tire. So them things turned really good. But I ran that class there for probably about a year. And it was <clears> – <throat> won a lot of races there. And then uh, East Bay uh, Speedway – and over in East Bay was a dirt track they were building. And so everybody decided they wanted to go do a little dirt racing. And I went over there. Uh, that's, that's how I got my dirt experience. Uh, and loved it, but you could lead every lap, uh, not touch a person, win the race, and then come home and have to work on it for three days to get it, you know, because it just shook it all apart. <laughs> and I decided then, you know, I mean, I'd run for a year or so on short tracks, or, you know, there – Auburndale and in uh, at East Bay, and I decided I wanted to move up. So I said, "Well, I'm gonna build me a late model," and uh, built me a late model, and that's that's kind of how it went went right from six cylinders to right into a, a late model. And now you talking about late model sportsman or no? This was uh, the, okay. the outlaw Camaro yeah, yeah, down yeah, here, okay. you know, oh, like yeah, a, yeah. back then, like ASA, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, started right there and went straight to New Smyrna Beach, and. Uh, from a, a quarter of a mile racetrack to a half mile racetrack, <laughs> and uh, had a very good, very good hot rod. Matter of fact, had one of the, I think the first Hal car, which that was a big name back then. Uh, Cause I decided to go run super late models or late models back then. Everybody had home built chassis, and uh, you know I, I eat, drink, racing, and I'd save my money and save my money. And a guy named Ed Howell out of uh, Beaverton, Michigan, was building chassis. And I had never been out of Polk County. And uh, me and a couple of my buddies, I, I, I had enough money, called him, got me a car, drove all the way to Michigan, didn't even know where Michigan was at. You know, went up there, and first time I ever seen snow. Got up there, it was snowing. So, oh, my gosh. But anyway, got the car home, put that thing together, went to New Smyrna Beach with it. First race there, I run second. And uh, really, it was a good race car, did well, started running all over, the, you know, Florida and different division. I mean, different tracks and, that's just kind of how it got started, you know, and I and I just loved it, you know. And then before long, I was running in Florida and running everywhere. And next thing I knew, I was in Canada one time. <laughs> I started. Wow. Up, I, I was. Yeah. I, I'll never forget this. I started. Uh, I think we might have started at uh, Maslin, Ohio, or somewhere racing. We we had like three or four nights. It was during the summertime. A lot of them places up there ran, you know, almost every night. And I'll never forget. I was standing in. It was on Sunday. Me and my guys were standing there. They said, ladies and gentlemen, I had raced. Me back up, I had raced like Thursday night, Friday night. We'd race all night. We'd get in the holler, and we had a guy that knew where to go. We'd go to sleep. We'd wake up. We'd be at the racetrack. We'd unload and race that night. Same thing the next night. Well, anyway, it was on Sunday. I remember that. We'd been on the road for about two weeks. And, uh, and we'd uh, went out and qualified. And 
and right before the race, I mean, it was some good hitters. I mean, Junior Hanley was up. But anyway, they said, ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem. And I stood up, you know, and all of a sudden it wasn't my national anthem. <laughs> And I said, you know, it's time to go home. It's time to, it's time to head back south. <laughs> but that's how it kind of went. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of yeah. how it started, you know, just running short tracks, Nashville, you know, went uh, up Alabama, Mobile, you know, Birmingham, all those old tracks. I mean, oh, it yeah, just, yeah. you know, it, and that's what really got me started and really, you know, really had, really loved that. It was great. Now, Winston Cup, how did that come into the picture? You know, I always wanted to, you know, wanted to, I mean, I sit there on Sundays and listen to these cup races, and and uh, it was just, uh, oh, that was my dream, you know, could ever, you know, ever be able to do something like that. And, you know, back then, uh, we were very blessed, very fortunate. You know, our family were in the construction business, worked down here in Florida building roads and working in the phosphate mines. And and uh, I, uh, I wanted to run, you know, something to do with NASCAR. Well, being the short track race and everything, I got to know a lot of cup drivers, you know, because they would come and run with us. Right. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it was – I mean, knew them all well. And uh, uh, Donnie Allison was driving for uh, – uh, uh, he had a, uh, a car that he – him and Pearson drove, 21 car. It was a, it was a uh, Grand National back then, I believe. Yeah. And uh, I bought that car. And I went to – it was in Alabama – I remember I'd go up and stayed at, stayed at uh, in Hueytown for, you know, weeks getting this car ready, and I went to Charlotte with it. And the first time that I ever went to Charlotte, had never seen Charlotte, you know, but made the race uh, about 20th. Uh, and nobody ever told me you had to tighten these race cars up for a race because, you know, we were all loose for qualifying. But, but I don't know, if, uh, halfway through the race, got in the fence, knocked the rear end off of it, had a wreck. But – from that, I took it to Hutcherson and Pagan, and me and Dick Hutcherson became real close friends from that point on, and he was a tremendous help in me getting into Winston Cup, but but that was kind of my stepping stone. I went to, uh, you know, now was Charlotte your first Cup race? Uh, not my that was my first Bush Grand National. Okay, my right, first yeah. Cup okay, race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first Cup race would have been Daytona. Daytona. Yeah, July <laughs> race. Yeah. Now, I tried uh, early on. I tried to. I had. I built my own cup car, right. you know, and, and yeah. tried. You know, tried because nobody let me drive for them. I don't blame them. Yeah. But uh, that back then, you just showed up. You just went to Daytona, and you know, if you had a car, and you could make the race, and uh, uh, didn't make the race the first time, and so kind of what happened. What really kind of now? When's the first time you went eighty? Uh, eighty. Eighty eighty one somewhere in there. Okay. Yeah. Well, your first cup race was at Daytona for the for the firecracker. In eighty or eighty one. In, in, in eighty. Yeah. So did you try to make the eighty five hundred? Coulda. I can't okay. remember. All right. I coulda. All right. yeah. yeah. No, no. Well, yeah, I might have, but when I drove in the uh, the firecracker race, I was driving somebody else's car. Okay. And I made the race. Right. You know? Yeah. But what but what kind of happened was I had a I had a car there that I tried to make the cup race with and didn't make it, but it was a good car. And uh as that year went on, you know, I learned more Hutch helping me, we got closer friends. Well, I had a guy that called me up that wanted to buy that car, and he wanted to go run the um, uh, heck, uh, what's the Saturday? Not I mean the other division that ran with us, ARCA. Yeah, he wanted to run the ARCA race in February in this car, and he wanted me to put it all together, field it, just bring it to him. He had a sponsor, and I said I'm in, you know, because I wanted to sell the car, probably or move it, and uh, but anyway. Uh, Got it all ready. About a week before the race was, a guy calls me up and says, hey, sponsor deal fell through, can't do it. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, oh, that's my luck. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, anyway, I said, well, what the heck? Car's ready. I'm going to go try to run this ARCA race. You know, what the heck, you know? So I go to go there, enter, you know, get into ARCA, sign up, and I win the race. And that's right there was kind of the, you know, the stepping stone for me, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, Started seeing some, you know, people looking at me. Uh, had a good field of cars there, and that just kind of how it took off. And and but my deal was was to try to get a ride in a cup car, you know. And I had the short track resume, but I hadn't run much speedway stuff. I hadn't run, you know, none of the 
you know, uh, the tracks that I, sh- you know, that, that back then that's what happened. Yeah. And so then it became a lot of politics and you tried to, didn't have much money. I just kind of had to go on my own deal. You know, you give me a shot and I'll give you 110%. And, uh, you know, I, I had run good in my bush cars, uh, before I got a cup ride working through, uh, uh, Dick Hutcherson, and what really really gave me a springboard to this deal doing that, running my bush cars and stuff, uh, I, I met A.J. Ford because him and Dick were real good friends. And through A.J. Ford, I met the, the right people with uh, Oldsmobile. That's when Oldsmobile was in there. So I started getting a little bit of help from Oldsmobile. And, and I kept running good on the bush series and, and on my short tracks deal. And I did a lot of politicking, and I got a I got a, a a pretty good deal from GM through Oldsmobile to help me. And when I did that, I had something to offer, and you know that's how it worked back then. And and I wound up getting a ride with Morgan McClure. Now, earlier in your career, when you were eighty one, eighty two, mm-hmm. uh, I think you did eight races each season on your own. Um, were you racing full time at that point, or were you doing something with your family's company? Oh no, I was working the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was had to work, had to pay bills. I mean, that was a thing. Living down here in Florida, we was a, uh, always left a day late and, and 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 get home a day late. You know, drove back and forth to all the races, uh, but just trying to just trying to make something happen. You know, and trying to learn. Uh, and it it was a different world back then. Different, as you well know, it was different. And uh, and every time that you you know would get to a track, you'd we would learn more. I remember one time, and I, I was hiring people. I mean, a guy helped me a lot was Jake Elder. You know, he was my crew chief for a long, you know, probably that year, them years, yeah. them races that yeah. year. Yeah. I remember I went to Michigan. <clears throat> I didn't ever see Michigan, never been to Michigan. And, uh, and, uh, well, you so, picked up that car. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. I, well, I had yeah. picked that car yeah. up earlier, yeah. but yeah. never been to that racetrack. Right. And, uh, and I'll never forget, you know, I'm sitting there and, you know, standing in the pit road, Michigan, you hauling, you, you hauling butt. <laughs> And uh, so I'll never forget Jake comes down there, and people knew Jake. Jake said, come, here, come on, boy, come here with me. And we walk all the way down in turn one. And he said, by the time, here comes Neil Bonnet. You know, I think he was driving for Junior or whoever. I mean, he rolls that thing in there. And he said, that's where you got to drive that thing to, right there. And uh, so, I mean, that's just – I mean, and, and that's what we did. And we did not make the race. I mean, just – my, my stuff just wasn't – quick enough back then we had they were probably was i don't know 40 50 cars showing up every week yeah you know i mean it wasn't where they didn't have enough cars yeah. and uh i uh same thing happened in atlanta I'll, I'll i'll never forget this we went to atlanta might have been that same year and i have to admit my car was one of the fastest cars there and uh I, we were in the, in the garage and i was pitted right by aj ford and you know, we were out there talking, and they, and, and Jake's saying, man, this thing's hauling butt, man. You, you good. Just we, We're going to work on it because they're going to pick up. We got right down to the end of practice, and he said, we're going to make one more run, bud. He said, this is going to be it right here. <laughs> I come down that back straightaway, and right when I start dropping that corner, that thing just turns completely around, backs it <laughs> in the fence, and just, 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 just destroys my ride. I mean, I, this is what I'm running for myself. I'm done. I'm out of money. The only decent car I got is just wrecked the whole – ass end of it's gone and I'm, I'm down and here comes Hutch you know Dick Dick Hutcherson and man I'm you know it, it'll be okay we'll get it figured out I said man I'm done I said I, I, I ain't got no more money I can't I can't do this and I walk in the garage and there's old Jake at his cigar and he was already <laughs> he was already sitting there working on AJ's car yeah he just you know flipped over and started working for AJ and I stood up and I walked over and you know and he looked at me he says boy he says all I gotta tell you is one thing he said, man, you was hauling the mail. But when you come down that back straight away, I just wish I could have been standing there to jack about two more rounds of wedge in that <laughs> thing because you were hauling by nothing. <laughs> and he just turned right back around and started working on the <laughs> And so, but, but uh, you know, it was unbelievable good times. I mean, it was great people. 83 through 85, you did cut back on Cup, but you did win the ARCA season opener at Daytona, as you mentioned. Then you finished second in Atlanta. Um, what was the reasoning behind stepping back and not running Cup and maybe concentrating on ARCA a little bit? Was that just, just a time and time and money? Okay, that was the deal. Getting more seat time, you know. I had getting more seat time, and, and you know I couldn't run them all. I, I had to pick and choose, and uh, uh, 
it was a good experience, you know. It, back then, I was young, just like all us drivers. We thought we were the best that ever had walked down the, the, the road. But, you know, that wasn't always true. You know, we didn't have the, I didn't have the experience on the bigger tracks. Uh, and that was one thing. I gained quicker experience on the bigger tracks than I did anywhere, and I think that paid off for me in my career, you know, back when, before we got restricted. Yeah. You know, when we were open, I mean, it was, that was, that's when it was real. And, uh, and I'll say that it's great now, but it, but back then that's when it was real, and I was I have to say it I was pretty good at it, yeah. you know I mean it was it wasn't a game of chess like you know they say now I mean it was you all in you're all out you know and it had a lot of patience and and a lot of working together I mean they so but but I got gained a lot of experience on the bigger tracks because that was where I, I wanted to go. And it costs more, but I wanted to go there because you can, if you'd ran good, you got. I thought you would get recognized more because yeah. the bigger tracks back then were on TV. Yeah. You know, yeah. the smaller tracks they weren't televising all of them. Yeah. Then I think, but it was that's the main reason. It was just. Now, I, how how big an adjustment was it in the seat going from the small tracks? Oh, that was one. The, of, that was one of my biggest deals. I mean, that was kind of tough. When I went <clears throat> when I started driving for Morgan McClure. Uh, uh, and, and the reason I'm jumping up there because me and Tony Glover was my crew chief, and me and Tony talked about it a lot. Uh, I'd be short track racing in a, on a quarter or a half mile racetrack, and the next day I'd be at Talladega or Daytona or Charlotte, you know. And and it was almost every time you know you you just had to you had to get in that car and you had to remember where you're at and what you were doing. Steering was all different. What I mean by different, I mean I'm running my short track car and I'm running down the corner and you do this. You know, and we had them old slow boxes on those on the on the cup cars because we're running so fast. You didn't want a fast box because you'd wreck. And I'd go down in there and just turn that thing a little bit. Before, but I never did it, but almost knocked a wall down. You know, and Tony <laughs> said, "Turn it, turn it, turn it." You know? yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. But it was it was a big adjustment, and uh, uh, it, you know, it's just something. I think it was just gaining more experience, more ex more experience. And then when we then when I did start running full time and running some of the short tracks with the cup cars, I mean. I, it, that helped a lot. It was good. You mentioned the ARCA win at Daytona. Mm -hmm. How big a deal was that? For you? Ah, man, that was big I, I, for me. I, I couldn't believe it. Didn't have any intentions of going there to race, you know, until yeah. like a week or two before then. And and it was. I, I learned. Started meeting a lot of people. That's when things started happening. I'd been around to a few races, and you know, you would see you would see people again that you met that were wanting to help. You yeah. know that. I might have seen that night at the bar, or or seen someplace else, and we talked. You know, we but just, I started getting a little bit more help, and uh, people were giving me ideas how to do things. I mean, we were just a bunch of guys from the Orange Grove and the cow pastures down here with a <laughs> with a cup car or an Arca car, trying to run 200 mile an hour, and had you know didn't really have a good clue how to doing it. But I, I just remember that when I won that race in Ar at Arca race. That car was so out of control, it was unbelievable. And Elmo stopped, run second that day. And we had like five laps to go, and he was coming. So, of course, Elmo he, stopped. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, I believe that's who it was. But he ran second. And uh, I remember about five laps ago, he was coming. And I'm, so, of course, I'm driving hard. The car's already about to wreck. And, and I'm just driving harder and harder. And I'll never forget Dick Hutcherson. You know, he's on the radio. He says, man. Just settle down and breathe, you know, <laughs> and you know, and I, you know, I really yeah. didn't settle down that much, yeah. but won the yeah. race, and I just, you know, it was, it was really a, really a, a, a it, it took a little bit. I remember I went home that day, was only two hours from the racetrack, and I went back uh, the next day or the second or third day when Cup practice had started, and, you know, just to go back and hang out, you know, that's what I want to do, and. Uh, I, I could see right then when you win a race at Daytona, then people talk to you and, and come up and talk to you a little differently, and that was kind of getting it started right there. And I was just so blessed. I mean, I was so happy, yeah. and uh, still couldn't figure out how I did it with what I had, but it, it worked out. You mentioned AJ Foyt, mm -hmm. and of course, most of the world knows this really rough, gruff guy. That, you know, never never had an unexpressed thought or opinion. How does a kid from the cow pastures in Orange Grove in Bartow, Florida, get past that and get to know A.J. Foy? You know, A.J.'s got kind of two sides to him. You know, he, he really puts that big 
big deal out there that, you know, he's a mean old grouchy son of a gun. And, and he can be. Uh, but me and him just hit it off uh, through Dick Hutcherson, you know. But we just spent a lot of time together. You know, and I tell him, I say, oh, hey, yeah, that's bull, you know. But he was he was a pretty big mentor to me. I mean, he, he helped me a lot. Uh, we just hit it off, you know. And, and I, I, why, I don't know. I do remember maybe jump forward a little bit. I was driving the, the, the four car for Morgan McClure, and he wanted, he wanted me to come to uh, Indianapolis. And so me and uh, Dick went up to Indy. And, uh, and what it was basically come to find out, you know, he was fixing to get out of the Indy cars, and he was looking for a wheel man. You know, he was looking for a driver. And uh, I'll never forget. You know, I mean, I love what I was doing, but I was up there in awe. That's back when, I mean, Indy was, they was, oh, God, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And you walk out pit road with him. You know, you thought you would, you know, it was oh, just yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah. whole front of straight way. just like to keep, with Richard when I drove for him, with, I mean, people was going nuts. But I'll never forget, we, we got to talking about me driving that Indy car. So I was all kind of in, you know, in in it, you know, I'm bulletproof. I'm, you know, I, yeah. and I'll never forget. We're all sitting in his garage. He's got two or three Indy cars sitting there. And I get in that, get down in that Indy car, just, and he's standing there. Uh, telling me what this is and this and that. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I, I could do this. I could do this. That's, that's no problem. And, uh, and by that time, I said, uh-oh, and practice was going on. Somebody said, oh, wreck. Somebody had a wreck. So the next thing I know, I'm looking around. Everybody's gone. But I'm sitting in this Indy car. I'm still sitting there. So sit there for a little bit. And I said, well, i got to figure out how to get out of this thing. So I get out, and I cannot remember the guy's name. But there was a guy, small, Smalley or something, went down in turn one. Got loose, lost the ground effects, and drove that thing straight into the fence. Killed him instantly. It looked like he went into a tunnel. I mean, that's just how. Wow. And I mean, and so I'm, I get out, and we're standing there looking at the monitor. I said, man, that's bad. We didn't know he, we knew he probably had killed him, but we didn't know. And then in about a minute, here comes a wrecker with his remains of his car on it, and it was bad. And I, I sit right there for a second, and I said, you know, and I was driving for Morgan McClure. I had a roll cage around me. I was doing what wow. I love, and I come to back to Florida. And uh, best decision I ever made. But but me and AJ got along good. He he helped me tremendously. Helped me tremendously through sponsors, which needed mo- I needed money, and uh, and he gave me a lot of guys. Gave me a lot of butt chewings too. <laughs> and uh, but I mean that was regular for me to get butt chewed out. So you know, it wasn't no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned the help from Oldsmobile. And we did talk to Larry McClure last summer, mm. and he said that going into 1986, the decision on drivers basically came down to you and Davey, Alex. Yep. That's what he said. Um, how aware of the process were you, and was Oldsmobile kind of the, 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 the tipping point? I would say it was. I know before, uh, before that decision uh, – me and Davey were looking for rides. And uh, Hoss Ellington, he was looking for a driver, too. We knew Morgan McClure was looking for a driver. But anyway, me and Davey, went, we went to Atlanta and drove uh, Hoss's cars in the Atlanta race. And uh, I, had, I had a backup car, and Davey had his main car. But, you know, I knew that we were, you know, competing for the a seed out there. And, uh, but I think probably the Oldsmobile deal, when I got that, the gentleman that was over the racing division over to where his name, name was Dave Gerard, and he was a great guy. And me and him got along good. And I, I probably would say that was the you know, determining factor because there was a lot, of, a lot of parts and money involved in it. And, and, and probably, you know, Larry's team was needing that. And uh, no sponsor, but that was a big boost to come there with help from GM. Because Larry's team, we were in a fellow station, you know. I mean, he wasn't, you know, he was two or three notches above what I had. Yeah. And, and, but he had more experience, and he had, had Tony Glover. You know, me and Glove, we hit it off good right off the bat, and, and it was really good.